All right, let's talk about this here kitchen. The van is almost finished, uh, so I'm slowly moving things in here, solely because I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna organize everything and because I still have to wait for my company to unleash its corporate grips on my 401k. So we're getting there. Um, if you, well, let's first acknowledge YouTuber Ken, who noticed that I always have some kind of ridiculous headwear on. So when I mailed him one of those bedazzled breast pumps, he mailed me back money and a whole case of crazy colored and American flag bandanas. So thank you, Ken. It's been a busy week around here. Um, th this stuff is really odds and ends, but if you remember from the last video, the van and I had our first public speaking appearance at Carolina Bay, which is a retirement home. The only qualification to get in there is you have to be a complete badass. So they were fun. You saw the picture at the very end where I swear that was their idea. Everyone raised their middle finger. It was hilarious. Uh, and then the next day I had prom, not for me. Um, I've aged out of that a little bit, but I was invited to be the red carpet host for A Night to Shine, which if you've not heard of that before, it's a global event where um, folks who have special needs of all ages and needs from uh, autism um, to those who are handicapped and in wheelchairs, but whole spectrum, um, around the globe, they host these big dramatic proms. And it was awesome. I mean, I got to do the red carpet thing because that's, you know, interviewing people on the fly is kind of my specialty. Um, but they, there was no expense spared. They had the full red carpet. They had balloons. They got all dressed up, came in on limos. Uh, the Marines from Camp Lejeune came down as dates. And I remember my prom. My prom sucked. It was petty. It was like, what was everyone wearing and who had the most expensive dress and who was dating who? And, da, da, da. and it was just, it wasn't really that fun. These people, they didn't give a damn who was wearing what and who was dating who. They were just so thrilled to be there. And if I could bottle a just a, an ounce of the joy that was in that room for those people that night and give it to the rest of the world, we'd have like no problems on earth. They were amazing. It was a great event. But so I've been busy kind of doing some of that stuff. Um, and now on this beautiful rainy day, I'm back in here trying to get this van rocking because I am ready to go. All right, so let's talk about the kitchen. Um, now, if you watch other van videos, you know that to use hashtag van life, you have to be a vegan, you have to have a man bun, you have to have a shelter dog, you have to be a couple, you have to show your bare ass in most of your pictures and your side boob when you're cooking in a bikini, which is actually really hazardous. You have to have an Instapot and a smoothie maker. And throughout the videos, you tell everyone that in your Instapot and Smoothie Maker, everything is vegan, and you have to say that about 50 times. All right, so we're not doing that. I don't have an Instapot. I am not going to put a pressure cooker in a van, and I don't have a Smoothie Maker because um, I think eating animals is okay. A big night in the kitchen for me is if I cut my peanut butter and jelly on a diagonal. I hate cooking. I can bake you under the table. I used to own a bakery, but I hate cooking. Cooking when you're single sucks. There's no point in buying all those ingredients just to make one plate of food. So there's no reason why I should bring a lot of kitchen swag. All right, so let's do, let's do what I am bringing. And then if you see anything that I'm missing, I hope that you will let me know. And I'm also gonna go through how I secured the kitchen because this stuff, based on my driving ability. There we go, good job, dumbass. It could fly just about anywhere. All right, so I'm gonna pick this up. It's gonna get very Blair Witch Project-y for a second. Oop. <laughs> see, told you. The microwave came, mm-hmm, right here. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be, and that is fantastic. Um, this can only be used when I am attached to shore power up here. Uh, and it's a 700 watt microwave. When you are planning out your van, whatever your generator will uh, allow you, um, my generator is a 2000 watt generator, 
take that, look at what you might be running simultaneously, air conditioner, microwave, anything else, and then you gotta figure out what you can actually handle power-wise. This was the lowest wattage microwave that I could find that was also adorable. This I've secured with a bungee and oh two bungees and those are hooked to the wall and I'm hoping that that is going to be enough. Uh, I do not want to screw the bungees and the hooks into the plywood because the plywood's very thin. So if anyone has any tips on stabilizing that, that would be great. Also in regards to stabilizing your swag, I saw so many van videos where they got the little tiny rare earth magnets, the ones that I used for uh, the screens, and they attach them to the cabinets so when they're driving, their, their cabinets won't open up. Uh, that, uh, that was tested when I went to that public speaking event and magnets are no match for my ability to slam on the brakes. So that was not going to fly. Instead, that's about as far as they're going to get because I did the unthinkable, which is I navigated into the baby and child section of Walmart where I don't belong and I got child proof locks. These are kind of obnoxious because every time you want to open something up, you just have to hit down a little tab, but once it clicks, she's not going anywhere, okay? The magnets did not work for me. These, and let me tell you, installing childproof locks, I don't know what you parents are designed with, but this was the most tedious, time-consuming project of the week. Little tiny screws and you gotta like get up in the cabinet. Do not attempt to install childproof locks, these small ones, on your shit unless you've just lost all hope for happiness for the day. You've got nothing to do. You've just given up on having uh, a joyful 24 hours and you just want to just propel all of your rage and frustration into these micro screws because this project is a pain in the ass, but it's effective. Taking the microwave and I'm taking my toaster oven and that is pretty much it as far as appliances that need to be plugged in. If you want to take your vegan Instapot or vegan smoothie maker, rock on. But I hate cooking again, so I know I'm not going to do more of it when I'm living in a van. Um, so the toaster oven, when I'm parked, will probably be mounted on top of the microwave when I'm driving, I will likely secure it to the floor. Um, but so let's go through the cabinets. I bought, I'm not quite sure how long I'm gonna stick with these, but I bought camping plastic forks and knives, which come in these adorable colors as though I'm three years old, right? This will, if, if I meet some sexy man bun dude on the road and invite him over for dinner at the van we'll have peanut butter and jelly with children's utensils and he'll be totally freaked out and never call again and we'll just continue with the theme that we've been running with for as long as i've been allowed to date okay moving on damn it to hell see i know that these childproof locks are gonna because they're also kind of adult proof i am only bringing one pot i got one of the copper pots um these you do not need to add grease or cooking oil to, uh, based on design, the Copper Chef. So that's one less thing that I have to carry. I will put links to everything that I'm showing you. If you like the idea for your van, it will be right underneath this video. Um, and I obsessively buy everything online because I don't like going to the store because that means I have to interact with people. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning because I'm a fancy bitch is have a huge Yeti full of Earl Grey tea with the milk in after the water because I'm not a barbarian. And there is a difference. Um, so this has a design where there's an air vent on the bottom and the engineering of this is that it will cook faster while the water will boil faster. And if I can use less propane, then I'm willing to pay a little bit more for this. So this is very simple. You got your base, your propane, you hook this up here, you rock and roll. This does not make peanut butter and jelly, but worst case scenario, if I cannot hook up, if I do not have generator, I at least know that I will have tea and whatever I figure out can go in a pot, 
probably oatmeal. <laughs> yep, it's a culinary experience on this trip. I've seen some people legit freak out on YouTube about people using propane inside a van. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I've seen people do it in a tent, so, and they're still alive. It's crazy. For the van's water supply, I have a seven gallon clean or fresh water tank and it was seven gallons specifically because that is the absolute maximum that I can physically lift. Every gallon of water is about eight pounds so I'm at um, seven times um, almost 60 pounds worth of water and that's where I'm I, and I will be struggling to carry that and I'll probably get out the Lowe's yoga pants and get somebody to help me but uh, that's as much as I can deal with, so that's what I have. Um, and now, so refill. Yes, I can take out that water tank and take it into my gym or um, anywhere where there's a water access and fill it up there and then bring it back, but that is kind of a pain in the ass. So what I figured is likely going to be more accessible um, and easier to manage would be to carry a hose and if I can get a water tap um, I've got drinking water. So this is a zero G RV and marine hose. These are very popular in our boating community because unlike the very thick rubber hoses they fold up into next to nothing all right and I put a hook on the back door so I can just loop it up back there um, but they're very very compact this is a 50 foot hose these trash cans I found on Amazon and all you do is line a trash bag or a plastic bag in here right and cover it up so that it doesn't get stanky and I put one over here and one over here for recycling um, but this was the smallest trash setup I could find and that was very deliberate because I certainly do not want to be carrying my garbage for long amounts of time. I think if you are doing it right, you'll probably just empty out the trash uh, daily whenever you head out for the day. And last but not least, and this is where I kind of need your feedback because when I asked my girlfriends what they thought, there was no consensus, which is what happens when you ask your girlfriends anything, really. Um, the mattress, yeah, that wonderful mattress that we all agreed is the best damn budget-friendly mattress that you can buy for your home or RV or what have you. Uh, I knew that it was going to be a little bit longer than what I had built. So now it kind of sits up like this. So the question is, do you cut that or not? To cut it, you you have to take the mattress out of its casing and you get an electric knife or a jigsaw or a foam cutting knife uh, and you chop it and then kind of seal the encasement back on. Obviously you automatically void your warranty, but the question is, do you do that to that mattress or do you just let it be itself, curve up there and then line it with pillows and you know, almost kind of use it as something to sit up in bed. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I'm leaning more one way to another, but I want to see what you all say. Well, once I get that 401k and get my clothes in here, I mean, we are gone. So thanks for hanging in there, everybody. Thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. Y'all are badasses. Absolutely none of this has been easy or affordable. I so appreciate your help and believing in my little mission here. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.